Dan Hartman, he was only 43 years old when he passed away. But in that short time, he produced so many great songs. But unfortunately, Dan was not able to be his true self. Dan did have lots of great hits, but he did die with a secret close to him. And potentially, he could have maybe lived longer than he did. So guys, if you are new here, hello, my name is Kiki, and I like to talk about music. And I like to talk about the artists who gave us the great music that we all love and know. And we do have our very own radio station, Kiki.fm. Go ahead and take a listen to it. It's free in the App Store. And we play a lot of the artists that are spotlighted here on this channel. Well, you can hear them all on Kiki.fm. I also do a Friday Night Live every single Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And if you like to connect with other people who are as passionate about music as you are, and I mean, this Kiki Nation family is passionate about the music that we talk about. Come on and join us on Friday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. It is a lot of fun. But you gotta be subscribed. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. Now, why not? Dan was born in West Hanover Township, Pennsylvania on December 8th of 1950 to parents Carl and Pauline. His father was an aerial gunner in World War II before eventually working for the U.S. Postal Service. He also had a sister, Kathy, and a brother, David, but it was really difficult to find out what they are both doing today and if they are even still around today. So if you know anything about Dan's brother and sister, Kathy and David, let us know in the comments down below. Now, I did find a picture of Dan's late father, Carl, his sister, Kathy, with Edgar Winter. I'm not really sure when the picture was taken. It was... I don't know, I think in 2017, but I'm not quite sure. I did also find out that Kathy and her husband, Rusty Newcomer, wrote a bunch of songs. And one of the songs is called Hex, and that was written by Rusty and Louise Phillips, and it was produced by Kathy. But I couldn't really find out any further information about the siblings. Rusty and Kathy's band was called Signal 30. Not sure if it's still a thing in existence. I, I just don't know. And Dan's brother, David Hartman, you know, the only things that kept popping up was about David Hartman, the TV personality from Good Morning America. No relation. However, the David from Good Morning America, the David Hartman from Good Morning America is from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And some of you know that I am from Rhode Island. So I thought that was kind of a little a cool little tidbit there. A few things I did find out about Dan's brother, David, is that he started a band called The Legends and he asked Dan to play keyboards in that band. Dan was like, I don't know if I want to do that. But of course, he eventually, you know, got himself involved in the band. They did all kinds of gigs between school dances and outdoor festivals. So they were getting themselves around and creating a really great name for themselves. So I guess you could say that Dan's desire for music really erupted from being in the band The Legends with his brother David. However, Dan did start learning classical music when he was only six years old, and he continued to learn music throughout his young and early teen years. Dave did eventually leave The Legends, so when he left, this automatically put Dan in charge. The Legends did release some singles, but by day, Dan was a banker because, you know, he had to pay the bills. And it's so sad that when you're in the arts, it's difficult sometimes to pay your bills. So you have to have a day job and then you do your creative job at night, which is what Dan did. So Dan was working as a banker and then writing songs and performing with the legends. So Dan, you know, he produced some demos and he started handing them out because he figured, you know, the legends may be able to get a record contract or maybe Dan could get a record contract and use the legends band members as his band. So Dan schlepping those demo tapes all over the place ended up being a really great thing for him because Rick Derringer, you know, the McCoys, Edgar Winter Group, and rock and roll hoochie coo Rick Derringer, he heard one of Dan's demo tapes and the song that he plucked from one of those tapes was Free Ride. Edgar then eventually asked Dan to join him and his band, but unfortunately, there was no room for the legends, you know, Dan's friends, Dan's bandmates. So Dan did what he had to do he left the legends and he joined the Edgar Winter Group in 1972. The year Dan joined the group, they released their very first album called 
They only come out at night. And as a kid, I, I totally remember the album cover and it was just so strange to me. This guy was on the cover with white hair, no shirt on, makeup, and a necklace. But I was jamming to Free Ride and the instrumental of Frankenstein. Yes, I was. Not right when it first came out, because I was really little then, but I got into music quite early in life. So by the time I was around seven, I remember seeing that album and I remember playing those songs on my little teeny tiny, probably hand-me-down record player. And that hand-me-down record player was inside of my paneled bedroom with posters all over the walls. Yes, at seven, I had posters all over the walls. Now, that album, that debut album, did not start to take off until 1973, until the singles Free Ride and Frankenstein were released. Now, that album didn't really start to take off until about a year later in 1973, when Free Ride and Frankenstein were released as singles. Fantastic. You know, the album's taking off, the band is doing great, but they were on the road constantly. And apparently, Edgar Winter had accumulated a lot of debt from his previous group he was in called White Trash. So between being on the road and continually pumping out music and new records, it ended up taking a toll on everybody. But you know, the Edgar Winter Group was touring with the it bands of the time. Alice Cooper, yes, the Eagles. I I mean, everybody who was anybody, the Edgar Winter Group was touring with them. And these guys, they were having an amazing time. But near the end of 1976, they all mutually decided to call it quits because they just felt like they were at the end of their road. This was totally great for Dan, though, because Free Ride, which he solely wrote, peaked at number eight. And the Edgar Winter Group was still huge. So his resume was nice and meaty by the time they broke up. Now, at this point, Dan was completely on his own. He released a solo album featuring Johnny and Edgar Winter Group songs. But in 1978, when disco was the hot new genre, Dan was number one on the dance charts with his single Instant Replay from the album with the same name. Interestingly enough, which I did not know, who was on the Instant Replay album alongside Dan and many other great musicians? Well, before he was with Kiss, Vinny Vincent. Yes, absolutely. Didn't know that. He was a backup vocalist and guitarist on the Instant Replay album. Go and check it out. Go see all the pictures of young Vinny. Pretty cool. Now, before the success of Instant Replay, Dan produced for so many great bands, including Foghat and 38 Special, and even did some writing for Diana Ross. And Dan always throughout the years had his hand in many, many different projects including movie soundtracks. Now, the 80s were great for Dan, and in 1984, he released a single, which was on the album with the very same name, and this is his biggest single ever, I Can Dream About You. But when Dan originally wrote this song at the request of producer Jimmy Iovine, the song was offered to Hall & Oates, but they declined because they had already finished the album they were working on, so there was really no room for the song. However, they did cover I Can Dream About You on their 2004 four album, Our Kind of Soul, as a tribute to their dear friend Dan. The song is in the 1984 movie Streets of Fire, of course is on the soundtrack as well, and Dan's song was the most successful of that soundtrack. Now, the original video that was produced for this song had someone else singing the song, but Dan put his musical foot down and said, no, it's in my contract that I have to be the only artist on any records. It is in my contract that I have to be the only artist on any records that come out and any promotional recordings of it would have to be my voice, unquote. So the video that we see today is actually a do-over. Dan wasn't happy with it, but us MTV watchers didn't know any different and we fell in love with it anyway. And of course, we fell in love with Dan Hartman. Now, like I said earlier, Dan had his hand in several soundtracks and just a sliver of the ones that he was a part of include Down and Out in Beverly Hills, Break In, and a big one, Rocky Four. 
in which he co-wrote the song, the very huge song, Living in America, for the late James Brown. It peaked at number four, won James a Grammy for Best Male R&B Performance, and was James's last hit, and Dan said that he was totally honored to have been a part of it. In 1987 and 1989, Dan produced two albums for Joe Cocker and worked on Tina Turner's 1989 album, Foreign Affair, which spun out Tina's hit, The Best. And not only did Dan co-produce that album for Tina, he played many instruments throughout the album and was joined by his friend Edgar Winter who does a saxophone solo for the best. Now, that I call a full circle moment. At this point, no one would know that just a few years later in 1994, Dan would pass away from an AIDS-related brain tumor. Dan allegedly did not receive any HIV treatment for his diagnosis. And it's really hard to say today that if Dan had received any treatment, it would have made a difference or it would have prolonged his life. We just don't know. AIDS received worldwide attention in the the 80s and today in 2024 there is still no licensed vaccine for HIV or AIDS but the highly effective treatment called antiretroviral therapy also known as ART does show almost immediate improvement after being used by newly diagnosed patients now if this treatment was available when Dan was alive it's unclear if he would have even tried it since he kept the fact that he was gay from the public eye it is Said that he was very open about his preferences to people close to him. But the 80s, let's think about it, was a totally different time. Even though we all knew it was a thing, you just didn't really hear it talked about a whole bunch. And even in high school, I had friends who were gay, but I didn't think it was weird at all. I guess everyone is different. But then when you think back to the times of Studio 54 and how open everything was then, why it couldn't have been like that in the 80s and why things changed in just a decade. So we just have to wonder if Dan was okay with his decision to just not say anything. And if he was okay with leaving this world with the secret that he had. Only those close to him know that answer. And you just have to hope that today it's okay for everyone around us to express who they are and be okay with it. And us being okay with everyone around us expressing and saying who they are. Dan Hartman gave us so many great songs, so much iconicness that it's hard to even put it all into this short video, but it's really sad that he couldn't be open about who he truly was to the rest of the world. Sending lots of love to Dan Hartman. Thank you for all the music and sending lots of love to each and every one of you. I love you, love you, love you. And I will see you soon.